music expresses things that you can't express in any other way. It is so powerful. It's just an amazing gift. Before I got the truth, I lived for music. I played hard and heavy rock and roll in bars and clubs around the New York City area for many years. To me, I just found it to be a very depressing atmosphere. But then I developed a love for classical music and I would practice six hours a day. I applied to the Juilliard School for the Performing Arts. I was accepted, but I did not attend. But deep inside, something was missing. My life changed drastically on February 16th, 1973, because that's when I learned the truth in a taxi cab. I came to Bethel on February 16th, 1979. When I first came to Bethel, I had to put music aside for a little bit. I started working in the press room, and uh, that was a completely different environment for me. I also worked with landscaping. I worked in construction over at Walk Hill, and I also worked with drafting and engineering. These were things I was not good at, but I really felt I learned so much from doing these things that it really kind of groomed me. And I think when Jehovah looked at me, he says, well, we got somebody we, got, we have to work with here. Just as you tune your instrument so it can be played in tune, Jehovah tunes you. He teaches us to keep things in their place and put worship of him first because that's where it's proper. When Jehovah became number one, everything else took its place. When Jehovah became number one, that's when everything took its place. So says Bill Mullane. We're hearing his story in the September 2021 JW Broadcasting episode. This is actually a new feature where they do a Where Are They Now style interview because Bill Mullane's story first appeared over 35 years ago in The Awake. If you're interested, it was the 1985 Awake, August 8th pages 14 to 17, and I've looked up his story. It had the title, I Lived for Music. And quite clearly, what we're being told here is that Bill was mistaken in living for music. What he should have been doing, of course, is living for Jehovah's organization. Back in 1981, I met my wife when I was playing music at a wedding. We fell in love with each other. As our love for Jehovah goes through the years, our love for our mates grows. Now, I didn't leave music completely because I still had a love for it. I still practiced as much as I could with, within my Bethel schedule and within my whole theocratic schedule. I don't miss it being number one. I just feel happier now that it's in its proper place. In 1995, when I first came over to Patterson, I was working with audio video. Since 2016, I've been working with music and working as a music editor and as a music composer. Working with brothers on a piece of music, it's a real blessing and a privilege. Jehovah's uh, letting us take advantage of a tool that we all like to listen to, but now using it in a way that praises Him. Our whole motive is not to earn money. Our whole motive in using music is to glorify our Heavenly Father, Jehovah. And we get music from all different cultures, and it really unites Jehovah's people. Music, it has a very special power in being able to reach the heart. Now there's time where we just sit around and we just jam and play, and you're really talking and communicating with each other. There's nothing like it. I'm happier now knowing that I've lived a clean life. Do I have any regrets? I have no regrets. What I did when I was 22 years old was the best thing that ever happened to me because that's how I came to know Jehovah. And that's how I was able to find a balance in my life. Our happiness doesn't depend on our job. Our happiness really depends upon our spirituality and our relationship with Jehovah.
That's what life is all about. It's a wonderful life. Channeling Louis Armstrong there towards the end. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful world when you're a Jehovah's Witness, when all you need to worry about, particularly in Patterson, because this is, after all, a Bethelite, particularly in Patterson, where you can just immerse yourself in doing nothing but serving the organization. That's a wonderful life. That's a life that everyone should aspire to. Well, you're welcome to say that, Bill Mullane. I would suggest that you're only ever going to say that it's wonderful. You're only ever going to say that you have no regrets when you're literally making a propaganda piece that's praising the organisation that fooled you to begin with. You're never going to be honest. You're never going to be candid and say, actually, it's a bit rubbish sometimes being in Patterson. And I've noticed a few things here in Patterson that would indicate that actually this isn't God's one and only true organization because I've witnessed corruption or I've witnessed the governing body saying or doing things. You're never going to be honest about that, are you, on camera in a JW broadcasting episode. You're only ever going to wax lyrical about the organization. And I find it reprehensible that young people are here being misled and duped into thinking that the only meaningful way that they can pursue a career is through the organization, doing something that benefits the organization in some way. Actually, there were three things in Bill Mullane's interview towards the end there that really stood out. He said one thing that I agree with, which is music it has a very special power in being able to reach the heart well that's definitely true in fact you're kind of stating the obvious there we've seen that time and time again in jehovah's witness propaganda they will use music to pull on the heartstrings there's a reason why during a testimonial or during a tearful reenactment they will play soft piano music. It's because it elicits an emotional response. Watchtower isn't stupid. They know how this works. Of course, they're going to devote resources to their video production and to the music side of things. They would be crazy to pay no attention to music and to overlook the obvious power of music to hook people emotionally. Because as I've said many times before, if you can get people hooked emotionally, you no longer need to persuade them. You no longer need to make logical sense because they're already invested, at least emotionally, in whatever it is you're trying to peddle. Another thing Bill Mullane says is... Our whole motive is not to earn money. Our whole motive in using music is to glorify our Heavenly Father Jehovah. I found this a bit of an insult to professional musicians. So if you're a professional musician who's earning a living by playing an instrument, that's somehow a bad thing. Because of course, if you can play an instrument or if you're musically gifted, the only useful career that you can pursue is that of producing Jehovah's Witness propaganda. That seems to be the message we're hearing here. Again, it's an insult to those who make a living, including, I'm sure, some Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm sure it's difficult to be a professional musician as a Jehovah's Witness, and there will be no end of judging going on and no end of people kind of looking down at you, your fellow brothers and sisters looking down at you thinking, you know, why are you a professional musician? This is, this is pursuing fame in Satan's system of things. So what? What's so bad about earning a living playing an instrument? Why are you only allowed to earn a living if it's something that's menial or something that doesn't give you any form of recognition? It's a similar thing whenever they're dealing with soccer. I don't know whether you've noticed. Apparently, it would be unthinkable for a Jehovah's Witness to be a professional footballer or a professional athlete. It's unthinkable for any Jehovah's Witness to do something that gives them any amount of personal recognition. We can understand why this is. 
Obviously, this is a cult that wants all of the praise and all of the adulation to go to just eight dudes. The governing body are the only ones on the planet worthy of fame and adulation. Everyone else just has to disappear into the background. And if they happen to be good musicians, that means not pursuing a career as a musician. And finally, I also wanted to pick up on Bill Mullane saying, Our happiness really depends upon our spirituality and our relationship with Jehovah. That's what life is all about. That's what life is all about. Our happiness depends on our spirituality and our relationship with Jehovah. Bear in mind the tone of this JW Broadcasting episode has been an attempt, a really clumsy, ham-fisted attempt to address mental health and suggest that if you have any discouraging thoughts, you should get rid of them you should get off the sad train and get on the happy train, or however it was that Patrick LaFranca put it, they have the gall in an episode that attempts to deal with mental health. They have the gall to say you're only going to be happy if you're a devoted Jehovah's Witness. Well, that is plainly nonsense. Again, you only need to spend time in a Jehovah's Witness congregation to realise that people aren't happy. I can distinctly remember in my years as a Jehovah's Witness encountering so many Jehovah's Witnesses who were suffering with depression or suffering with anxiety. There's nothing unique or nothing special in terms of your mental well-being about being a Jehovah's Witness and yet... Bill Mullane has the goal to suggest this. Of course, the organization is going to include this cute soundbite. It may be cute, but there isn't an ounce of truth to it. And actually, it's incredibly manipulative and coercive, not to mention reckless to suggest that happiness is part and parcel of being a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> 